In this video we will learn how to draw a centrifuge tube in Adobe Illustrator. Now I recommend uh, starting with an image, so I just googled centrifuge tube, found this image, just going to right click, copy image, and go over here to Illustrator, and click on it and hold control, press V, and, you ha and then I hold to zoom out, I hold alt and spin the mouse wheel. And I'm going to hold shift and then drag to bring it down to scale. And I recommend working with it about the size that you want to, um, about the size that your illustration is going to be. Okay, you notice that there's a little bit of a 3D aspect to it. You can see the top of the centrifuge tube. We're going to ignore that. So we're just going to assume that this is um, um, a two-dimensional object, but we're going to add some shading to uh, give it a 3D appearance. So the first thing we want to do is we want to we don't want to be moving this object around while we're trying to trace over it. So I would click on this and then I would uh, go over here to layers. If you don't see the layers over here, go up to window, go down to layers and then click on it. So we see this image here, we're going to lock it and uh, that way we can't select on it. Okay. So remove that and then okay, so let's draw some rectangles over this object to make it. Uh, to, to, shoot, to make our image. So I'm going to click and hold over here, click on the rectangle tool, and I'm going to just make a rectangle about this big. I want to make it a black outline and with no fill. That way I can see the object under it. And now I'm going to draw another rectangle by starting right here, drawing the kind of the, um, the, the shaft of the, the, um, the centrifuge tube. Now I want to I want to make this curve at the bottom, so I'm going to add two points right here. I'm going to use the pen tool to do that. So see the pen tool. Now you can do something a little more specific. You can click and hold and click on Add Anchor Points, and so that only will add anchor points. You won't modify any other aspect to it. So I prefer to do that. So I just click on here, and click on here, make it a roughly about the center. So now I'm going to use the direct selection tool. If you don't see the control toolbar look like this, go up to window and click on toolbars and click advanced. That'll show these two columns. Okay, so I'm going to click, use a, click on the direct selection tool and then click over here to this anchor and then hold shift and click onto this anchor. And now I'm going to, so you notice how that magenta line shows me when I'm centered. So I'm going to go along that until I'm centered. Bring it roughly about where this uh, curve uh, ends right here. I'm going to click on this and move it out. Click on this and move it out. And again, I can center it. So that's okay. Now I'm going to put a curve to these two lines. So I'm going to click on that line with, again with the direct selection tool. I'm going to click on that line. Then I'm going to hold shift and click on this other line. And then I'm going to click on the curve, this curve anchor uh, uh, tool. Now if you don't see this um, this toolbar up here, this tool menu, then go up to Window, click on Control, and that'll let this pop up. It's a very useful menu, so I recommend having it. So I'm going to click on this anchor, and I'm going to click on this handle and move this around so that's perfect that handle meets up with this line do the same thing over here move it so that it's perfectly meeting up with that line and now we're going to bring this one down a little bit okay just so that, and you can kind of see the trace below uh, the image below to see if you're lined up and you want to bring this one exactly the same height as the other handle. Takes a little bit of a finesse. Okay. Something like that. Okay, it looks pretty good. Now we're going to make the uh, the cap. So I'm going to click on the rectangle tool again. I'm going to make it roughly about the same size as that cap. Keep in mind that I have to rotate it. So I'm going to click over to the selection tool, not the direct selection tool. I'm going to click on the selection tool. I'm going to move over to the edge till I see the rotation, uh, the two arrows that indicate ro rotation. I'm going to rotate it till it looks aligned. 
doesn't have to be exact because you know, we're certainly taking some artistic liberties here. So I'm gonna make the, the seal cap. So I'm gonna click on this rectangle again just so I can get that exact angle. Hold Alt and drag. Okay, now I have these two rectangles. And now I'm gonna just use the, the um, there's two arrows. Now make sure that when you're doing this, that you're not scaling the stroke. So click on S, that gets, switches you to, to scale mode, click on enter. And then if you'll see the scale menu that pops up, make sure you don't have the scale strokes and effect clicked. So that looks good. It's uh, unselected, so that's good. So I'm gonna click okay. Now I'm gonna go back to the selection mode and I'm gonna modify this again. It's good. Now I want to do a line that connects these two rectangles and I'm going to use the pen tool. So I'm going to click and hold, click the pen tool. Now a nice little feature about the pen tool is if you click and hold, you create a curve line. So I'm going to create a curve line about like this. And I'm going to go over to this other point. I'm going to click and hold. I'm going to drag forward to make that. that looks pretty good. Click Escape. So now I'm going to click on the Selection tool. Now I'm going to click away, and then I'm going to click again on that object. And that gives me this control menu that I want. I want to change the stroke appearance. Click up. And there you go. That, that is the a, center, a very simple Centrifuge 2 uh, made in Adobe Illustrator. Now we want to add some solution to it. First, I'm going to make this uh, image disappear in the background. I'm going to click on layers and then I'm going to go down to that image that's locked. I want to click on the eye and that's going to make it disappear. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to add some solution to it. So I'm going to click on this uh, ob object here and hold alt and copy it. And then, so the important thing with the, uh, the copying is I click on this object, hold the alt key then I click with my left, left mouse button and drag, then I release the left mouse button, and then release Alt. Okay, so now we're gonna use the eraser tool. First, I wanna select this object, and that's an important thing about the eraser tool. If you select an object and you click the eraser tool, it will only erase that object. It won't erase anything that you haven't selected, so that's kind of a nice feature. So I'm gonna click on the eraser tool, and I'm gonna press Enter. Now you probably have it as a circle, kind of like this. Um, but I, um, in this situation, I want it to be completely flat, so I'm going to change the roundness all the way to the left, making it flat. 128 uh, points is a good for size, and then the angle I want it to be zero. Click OK. So I'm going to erase it down by clicking and holding, and then releasing. Okay, so now it completes that object, so it's a rectangle. So I'm going to drag it over here. First, let me make it make it blue. Then I'm going to click on the little uh, the stroke and make it no stroke. Then I'm going to drag it over here. Okay. So there's the solution. Now you notice that there's a little problem. It kind of cuts off half of the stroke, and I don't want to do. I don't want to cut it off. That's a common mistake that a lot of people make, and um, I just want to make sure we don't make that. So I want to. So there's two ways of doing that. One way of doing it is to click on the object, right-clicking, then right-click on it, go down to Arrange, and send it back. That will um, put that stroke on the outside. Another way, Control z so now it's back in front. Another way of doing it is to click on this line here, go over to Appearance. If you don't see Appearance, go up to Window and click on Appearance. And go over to Stroke, and then you'll see that you can have this border uh, kind of straddling the path. See, there's the path right here, and it's kind of straddling at both sides. That's indicated here. Or you can put it on the center side. That's obviously what we don't want to do. We want to put it on the outside. So that'll put it on the outside. And that looks nice. Um, I'm going to keep it with the center aligned stroke and just move it in the back because I think that works better. So I'm going to right click, arrange, send it back.
All right, so there you go. Now what I want to do is I want to give it a little more 3D. I mean, this would work fine. Uh, you know, you could um, just as an indicator, you can hold shift, create these little circles. Uh, and maybe put it uh, I don't know, green, sure, why not? And then hold alt to drag again, take it to zoom in, cancel. Click on the selection tool. And kind of hold alt and kind of copy away. Copy along here. And you add some particles to your centrifuge tube. Hold, select those. So I select everything, hold shift and click these objects to unselect them. I'm going to hold control and press G to group those. You can do it that way, or of course, you can use the same method that you used to make the solution to make a, a pellet at the bottom that's a solid pellet that works as well. All right, now let's do the 3D aspect. Let's go ahead and add these pellets in there. I'm gonna copy this, hold Alt, and drag it over. Now, it's, it's a good idea to look at that image again, so I'm gonna bring it back up, I'm gonna click on the layers, go down, go down to the image, I'm gonna unlock it, and I'm gonna make it up here. There it shows up again. Drag it over, so now I can look at it. Okay, so we're gonna add this shading on the side here. And so I'm gonna click on this object, go over to gradient, of course you don't see the gradient, go up to window and select gradient. So I'm gonna select gradient, I wanna make sure I click on the fill, and I'm gonna click linear gradient. Now I have a preset already here, but let's, let's take this away and start from scratch. So I'm just gonna click on that and drag it over now. I guess I can't do that. So I'm gonna do it like this so that it looks about the way you have it. I can kind of see 100. It's probably white. Okay. All right, so I'm starting from scratch. Maybe it looks like something like this. You're gonna drag this white into the center, but you're gonna make it um, actually a grayish color. Roughly about the same color as this object over here. I'm gonna click again over here. And again, we're on linear gradient. I'm gonna click again over here. This time I'll make it, I wanna make it um, a dark blue because there's a little bit of blue over here. You can't see it on this side, but you, there's a little bit of blue. So that blue is gonna shine through the plastic. It's not gonna look pure gray like you see over here. So we, went on, we don't want it that much blue. We're gonna click over here to this um, kind of the more continuous paintbrush. Go up here to HSB, and then we're gonna darken this up a little bit. So it just gives it a little bit of a bluish, maybe something like that, and drag it over. Okay, that looks good. And we're gonna double click on this. We wanna make this opacity to zero. Okay, click enter. Okay, so there, that looks pretty good. It gives a little bit of a 3D aspect, and then um, and now I want to apply that to these other objects. So I'm going to click on this object, hold shift, click over here, then click over here. And now it's, this gradient is going to remember that preset that you had. So you just click on it and that'll apply it. You don't want, if it was a long time ago that you drew this, I'm going to hold control press Z to undo it, now it's white. I mean, you can use the eyedropper tool by clicking the eye button and then clicking on that object and I'll apply that gradient. Now this gradient's a little bit off so I'm going to highlight these two objects and change the angle of that gradient maybe 150. It looks pretty close it doesn't have to be exact. Okay. Now notice that there's a little bit of a white glare so we're going to add that white glare by drawing a line so I'm going to click on this little pen tool and I'm going to click here Hold shift so it's straight, click here, and there you click right here. You want to align with this line here, escape, and you want to make this, uh, you want to click on the selection tool, click away, click back on this line. You don't want to have a fill. You want to have it just as a white line, so I'm going to click on the stroke, click on white line. There it is. I'm going to move it over a little bit. 
And again, it's not, I'm not reproducing exactly. You could, you could reproduce that exactly. It probably will look better, but you know, we're not going perfection here. We're just look something that looks fairly good. So I'm gonna go over, now I want this, it's a flat white line. I don't really like that. First thing I wanna do is make it a little transparent. So I'm gonna click on this, go over to appearance, go below stroke, you'll see opacity, click on that. Maybe do 80, just so it shines through just a little bit. And then we're gonna click on it, click on it again and add a kind of a blur effect. Click over to effect, go down to blur, Click on Gaussian Blur. I don't know, about a one pixel, maybe, uh, blur. That looks pretty good. And there you go. So there is a uh, centrifuge tube in Adobe Illustrator in a very simple form, and then maybe a little more um, three-dimensional artistic kind of form.